What happens if Democrats win the midterms? Today, I'm going to break down what you should be prepared for and how you can protect yourself from any policies that you don't like. I don't live in the United States anymore. I'm no longer a US citizen. I follow US politics for the purposes of nomad capital. So that's my caveat. I don't have a dog in this fight. I'm politically homeless. And so there's no one political party where I'm like, yes, I'm with them on 100% of stuff. But we do talk about how to keep more of your own money by paying lower taxes, dealing with fewer regulations and less nonsense in your business, protecting your assets from crazy government wealth grabs and all the new stuff they're dreaming up, and how to increase your freedom and grow your opportunities. And so for a lot of folks watching, a Democratic win in the midterms means you have a Democratic president, Democratic Congress, and you're going to be pushing more of Joe Biden's agenda through. If that concerns you, I'm going to tell you how you can protect yourself. I'm Andrew Henderson, founder of Nomad Capitalist. We help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors legally do all the things I just told you about. Basically, go where you're treated best is what we say. And the United States, probably not the place where your capital and your freedom is treated best these days. Maybe you think that's worse if Democrats take over more power. Now, on the social side, certainly there's been news in our industry where we help people get residences and citizenships in other countries, that there are people who are upset by Roe v. Wade being overturned at the Supreme Court, that it's going to be easier to get an abortion. Democrats are going to make sure that that gets codified into law. And so for folks who were looking at leaving the United States because they didn't agree with those kind of policies, they're tired of the school shootings, there have been uh, policies that are seen as being on the other side of the aisle, the Democratic side of the aisle, that are causing people to call companies like Nomad Capitalists and say, get me out of here. I'm tired of the chaos. I'm tired of the lack of my freedoms. Some of those things may be fixed. So if you want, you know, you, if you want, you know, assault weapons banned and abortion made legal, uh, then Democrats will help you. But let's talk about the financial stuff where we thrive. Obviously, uh, under a Democratic uh, government, your taxes are going to go up. But one of the things that I see, even not living in the United States, is all the stuff that, that should be free. There's one former politician that we follow on uh, Twitter. And, like every other tweet is, this should be free. That should be free. This should be free. Like what shouldn't be free? And yet who's going to pay for it? Well, the evil 1%, of course, because her narrative is greedy corporations, greedy rich people are the ones that are taking everything from you. That's increasingly popular. That progressivism is increasingly popular. And so imagine what happens when the economy actually gets worse, when you actually have another recession. If you have the Democrats in power, what are they going to do in terms of raising your taxes and in terms of imposing new taxes? Elizabeth Warren has been off in the corner, along with Bernie Sanders, talking about imposing a wealth tax that you can't escape from no matter where you move unless you give up your citizenship. And even then, she's got some plans for you. So what happens when you impose more of that? My opinion is very simple. The longer you have people who are support uh, taking money from wealthy people and raising their taxes and redistributing it, of course, giving their little sticky fingers on it every step of the way, the longer that you have politicians in power, the more that it's talked about, the more likely it's going to come to reality. You look at the last 20 years of kind of crazy economic policies, uh, redistribution policies, it just eventually stuff comes to fruition. And you're just increasing the amount of opportunities with every year that, let's say, Democrats are in power with them imposing that kind of stuff. So more stuff will be free. They're going to keep posing, uh, pushing for a wealth tax. Again, more chances to pass it, more opportunities of being in power. It's just going to happen faster. Uh, these people don't like you if you're successful. Now, I understand there are plenty of wealthy people who say, hey, listen, you want to have an abortion, go ahead. I'm not here to talk about that. But you can't deny the fact that the, the political narrative from the left in the United States is uh, that, it, again, let's go to the greedy 1%. Inflation is not the government's fault for printing a bunch of money. It's your fault. Yeah, it's the rich guy's fault. It's your boss's fault. And look at what that's contributing. We hire people all around the world. And I can tell you, uh, it is a lot easier for us to hire around the world than folks that I know who are hiring in the United States because it's just come into the culture. Right? There's just a lot of things that have entered the American culture. And so even if you don't want to lower your taxes, even if you don't think that they're going to impose a wealth tax, even if you don't think that they're going to confiscate some of your assets or you know, take some of your Social Security or you know, force you to put your IRA into you know, T-bills, for example, understand that the culture of these politicians hating you for your wealth is only going to have more cultural implications. And so that culture continues to change. Even some Democrats are saying enough of this kind of radical cultural change. Again, I'm not a culture warrior. I'm not sitting here as a Republican making a video telling you what to do, being politically homeless. But I can tell you that a lot of folks are concerned about the culture changing in their country. They don't recognize it anymore. 
I haven't been to the United States at all in five years, and even then I was there for a week. Ostensibly, I haven't really been in any serious way in the US for about a decade. And people tell me you wouldn't even recognize it these days. Everything is different. Everyone's a victim. You know, whether I agree with it politically or not, I, I'm sure there's areas where I agree with Democrats on some of the cultural stuff. Not all of them, but I'm sure there's some areas where I ah, let people do what they want. But as a, as a lifelong entrepreneur and an entrepreneur mindset, this constant victimhood is not something that I enjoy. And I can tell you in other countries, there's a lot less of that mentality. And so we're going to see people who are, more, who are less accountable. You're going to see more, more of a victim mindset that's going to impact not only directly your taxes and all the policies they want to push through, but it's going to have a bigger impact on the culture. It's going to be not the best place to do business. It's just going to have so many negative impacts by uh, imposing more and more of that on society. Now, is it going to be dramatically different if the Republicans take the midterms? Somebody suggested, well, you know, whomever wins in the midterms will be blamed when the recession comes in 2023. Bloomberg said there's a 100% chance of a recession. Here's the thing. I think during a recession, history would show that Democrats are viewed as the party that's going to solve it because they seem more compassionate and, you know, we're going to, like, help everybody out. And again, the rich are going to pay for it. It's always if you make less than 250, if you make less than 400, if you make less than a million, if you have less than 100 million, whatever it is, all right, don't worry, they'll take care of it, you relax. So I don't know that Democrats would be as blamed for a recession as, Republic as Republicans would, uh, because I think the Democrats will say, well, it's, it's the fault of this unchecked capitalism, and then they'll just go after and, and take more of your own money that way. So I want to be prepared no matter who wins, because eventually, when you have a recession, you're going to have people calling for your head. And you're going to want a place where you can go and live for your personal safety and to take control of your tax situation. Now, Americans have a harder time escaping taxes in their own country because you're always subject to tax. But if you run a business, if you have income, uh, you can potentially move that offshore and dramatically reduce the tax rate uh, if Democrats get in power either in this midterm or if Republicans get in power and then there's a recession and then Democrats get swept back into power because people are worried and they want to vote for the Democrats to fix that. I don't think there's a dramatic difference, by the way. If you're sitting around saying, just I can't wait till Trump gets back in power, Realize Trump lowered your top income tax bracket if you're a successful person from 39.6 to 37%. You didn't need to vote for Trump to do that. You just needed to move to the Cayman Islands or Dubai or, you know, any number of places in Europe, whether it's, you know, Milan or Dublin or, you know, Singapore, obviously not in Europe. Uh, you know, there's so many places you could move and you could lower your tax rate to zero or some kind of flat tax or some kind of lump sum tax or something. You don't need Trump to be elected. You don't need Republicans to come in to lower your taxes because they're not going to do a very good job. I mean, the biggest tax decrease on income tax rates, which again, as an entrepreneur, I see affecting me, was when I was a kid and George W. Bush got in and lowered them from 39.6 to 35. Woohoo! You're voting and you're hoping Democrats don't get in if you care about your taxes because you want to see your taxes go down by five percentage points. Just as I see people who are complaining about, you know, the... Democrats potentially getting back into power or keeping power of saying, uh, well, I'm moving to Florida to lower my taxes from California. You don't need to move to Florida to save a little bit of taxes when you could move to Puerto Rico in the United States to save almost all your taxes, or you can move to Panama, or you can move to you know, Italy, or you can move to Switzerland, or you can move to Singapore. Or Malay. I mean, there's so many places you could go if you're already going through the hassle of moving, and yet people are sitting around saying, I hope we can make this tiny incremental improvements if we're lucky which, by the way, if, if, if Democrats don't get back into power and Republicans get back into power, what's going to happen? Joe Biden's, for the next two years, just going to sign every tax cut they want? Of course not. So I don't think you'd have a dramatically different situation under a Republican win. But if Democrats get in, you're going to accelerate it. What our audience has told me is, you're screwed under both. You need to go where you're treated best. You need a second residence. You need a second passport. You need insurance to jump off the sinking ship at some point because the United States is just going to want to take more and more of your money. And that's true of a lot of Western countries because it's now in the culture. And so if people get upset about high gas prices for one election cycle and say, OK, put the Republicans in, they'll solve this by drilling. Within two to four years, they'll be back to the other side of the pendulum, which is why Western societies are so fragile these days that everyone's thinking in two to four year increments. I mean, how is it that, the, that these elections are determined by swing voters who have no core values that, all right, it's Obama this time and it's Trump the next time? They don't know what they want. And these are the people who are creating your financial future. You're running a business. Your assets are in a country. Your citizenship, your existence is tied to these swing voters who determine if Democrats get in this year or Republicans get in next year. Who cares? 
The United States is not turned on a dime. And so the Democrats probably get you to be worse faster. They're going to raise your taxes, take more of your own money, propose more crazy stuff. I mean, you have people like Warren Buffett who are saying he shouldn't get Social Security. You don't think that some of the more progressive people who are taking over the Democrats are going to say, great, uh, nobody with any money should get Social Security, jack up the taxes, take off the cap off Social Security. Everyone just pays full board. That's their entire existence is, I mean, imagine you're a business owner and you're just going to have to pay an extra 6.2% uh, on all of your earnings that right now are capped. I mean, it's just, it, it never will end. They'll get you to higher taxes and wealth redistribution and ask that confiscation faster. But if Republicans win, what's the big difference? And so stop waiting for the next election, if you're watching this. Stop trying to figure out who's going to get, stop with the horse racing. I, I, was, I enjoyed this for the first 27 years of my life until I realized that the values that I have of being an abnormal person who starts a business, invests around the world, and travels the world, I'm not like the average voter. Nobody cares about me. And probably nobody cares about you and your abnormal needs either. And so you're not, your voice doesn't count, right? The fact, I mean, if you're voting for Republicans, you're voting for a better economic situation for you and your business alongside people who just want to own a gun. I'm not saying you shouldn't or don't want to, fine, own a gun. If that's, if that's what you're voting for, I'm not, I'm not taking that to task. But I'm saying there's plenty of folks who are voting alongside you who would be happy to go to the other side if their issue that had nothing to do with your issue was solved by the other side. The better answer is just to go where you're treated best. Go where that you can run your business. Go where the taxes are lowest. Go where the personal safety is highest. Go to a place, whether it's Dubai, whether it's Singapore, whether it's Panama City, whether it's Dublin, whether it's Zurich. Go to these places where you can get more for your money and stop waiting for the next election to save you and stop, you know, crossing your fingers and hoping there'll be a red wave or biting your nails and afraid of a blue wave. Just let what's going to happen happen because it's going to happen without you. And whether the Democrats get in or not, you're still largely going to be screwed and paying a lot of money in taxes.